visuals coming in off the Kuwait fire, the mishap that killed 45 people. Those Indian mortal remains have been brought back to India. The Indian Air Force flight that's carrying the mortal remains of 45 of them has just arrived at the Kochi airport. Those are images that we see here. Indian Air Force carrying mortal remains of all 45 Indians have been brought to the Kochi airport. In fact, they have been coordinating with the Kerala government as well. We know for certain that most of them hail from Kerala. Accompanying the remains is Minister of State Kirti Vardhan Singh. He's flown in. In fact, he quickly, soon after the incident, he rushed to Kuwait, coordinated the repatriation efforts, and he's brought the mortal remains via the Indian Air Force flight, just landing at the Kochi airport. A really disastrous fire that killed 50 individuals, of which 45 of them Indians. All right, the numbers that we have here is 31 of them out of the 45, 31 Indians hailing from Kerala particularly, their mortal remains have been brought back. They've just landed at the Kochi airport. These are live visuals coming in, special IAF flight from Kuwait with the mortal remains landing in Kochi airport with 31 Indians mortal remains that have been brought back. The rest of them hail from different other parts of the country, but 31 of them from Kerala alone. Chief Minister Pinrai Vijayan has also reached the Kochi airport as the flight has landed. They are waiting for those on the flight to deboard. Union Mantri Suresh Gopi at the Kochi airport as well. Coordination efforts have been on since the day the episode happened. In fact, out of the 50 people who died in that building fire tragedy, there were at least 45 who were Indians. Most of them hailing from Kerala. 31 of them, their mortal remains has just arrived into Kerala. S severe fire that broke out in the ground floor of that Kuwait housing complex. It rapidly caught on to the upper floors where nearly 200 people were residing. At least 100 of them were Indians. And it could have been a short circuit that's suspected in fact, the investigation into what really led to the fire is still on, but initial investigation claims it, it was a short circuit and it rapidly spread to the other floors as there was a lot of combustible material placed inside those apartments. Shivi Mohl, who's also with us, she's in fact right there at the Kochi airport tracking those live images. Shivi, very tragic to see uh, the family members as well as the Kerala government all who arrived can't imagine what's going through the family of those deceased. 31 of them, a large majority of those who died, all hailing from Kerala. They've just landed at the Kochi airport with the mortal remains. Give us more details. Uh, well, Nabila, the mortal remains of 31 people who died, 31 Indians who died in uh, Kuwait has landed in Kochi. It, just, it, it was supposed to land at 8.30, but there was some delay in Kuwait that uh, right now it's landed at 10.30. Out of the 31, 23 are from Kerala, 7 from Tamil Nadu and 1 from Karnataka. Uh, the mortal remains of the Tamil natives will be taken to Tamil Nadu by road, is, uh, by road way is what we are understanding. Uh, the representatives from the DMK government in Tamil Nadu has also reached uh, Kochi along with Chief Minister Pinrai Vijayan. Uh, we saw Chief Minister Pinrai, we heard Chief Minister Pinrai Vijayan saying that all arrangements are in place. In fact, yesterday there was a special cabinet meeting held by the Kerala government to uh, coordinate all the activities. He said that the central government did act on time. Everything was coordinated well, but uh, the State Health Minister Veena George was supposed to travel to uh, Kuwait yesterday, but that didn't happen at, 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 as the External Affairs Ministry didn't give the political clearance. But yes, uh, it's a, but he also went on to say that it's not a time to discuss politics about all this. It's about focusing on what can be done right now. Uh, the most important thing is, of course, uh, ensuring that the uh, mortal remains reach the residences on time. In fact, uh, some, most of the, uh, you know, the last uh, rites will be performed today itself is what we are understanding. So it needs to reach the house of these 23 people. Uh, all the arrangements in Cochin Airport are in place because there's been tables laid there. Uh, each table has the name and the photograph of the 
person who died, who are natives of Kerala. Uh, the mortal remains will be placed there. Chief Minister Pinrai Vijayan, on behalf of the state government, will receive the mortal remains. Uh, and right after that, it will be taken to the houses, the respective houses of these people, the 23 people. In fact, it's very tragic because, you know, at, out of the 23, at least two of them had returned to Kuwait after a vacation only last week. So, you know, it was just a matter of weeks' time that, you know, they lost their lives. They were in Kerala a week ago, and this uh, today they're coming back to Kerala, but, you know, uh, lifeless. And that's something that's uh, come as a shocker for the families. In fact, not just the families, uh, the state of Kerala, considering that the state has a very close relation uh, with country, uh, you know, countries like Kuwait, uh, you know, uh, since a lot of, uh, there's very considerable Malayali population, the Malayali diaspora in uh, foreign countries are very strong. So it's been a decade-long relationship, and that's what Chief Minister Pindrai Vijayan was highlighting, that uh, in the recent past, we've not heard of a tragedy like this, where, you know, we had to wait here to receive see the mortal remains of so many Malayalis coming from uh, abroad. This is uh, tragic. This is, uh, uh, you know, shocker for everybody uh, in Kerala, considering that mostly all the families in Kerala will have at least one relative or one family member staying abroad. So that's the kind of connection the Malayalis have with these countries also. So uh, extremely tragic, extremely shocking that some of the families got to know about the uh, death news. Uh, you know, they got a confirmation after seeing the photographs of these people on, uh, you know, television screens as well as on newspapers. So, uh, extremely tragic. They were in close touch with the families who have gone there, uh, you know, as the sole breadwinners of the family. And coming back lifeless is not something that any family could accept. And that's exactly what we are seeing and hearing around uh, us in Kerala today. So, so tragic, uh, Shibi. But... From what we see here, there's been seamless communication between the, fam the family members and those who are currently recovering. We hear that many of them are still critically injured. They are receiving treatment at hospitals. Those, many of those also hail from Kerala. Uh, so efforts by the government of India has been smooth. We know that helplines have been open right from the day uh, this incident happened to now. And the repatriation efforts have also been smooth. The flight has arrived uh, along with the MOS himself. Uh, give us more on the coordination efforts with the Kerala government along with the centre carrying this forward in tandem. Uh, well, uh, Nabila, like you said, uh, there are many people who are still admitted to various hospitals in Kuwait who are undergoing treatment. Some of them, the, some of the injuries are very serious. Some of them are seriously injured is what uh, the government sources were telling us. So uh, we'll have to wait for a few more days to see that, you know, whether their health recovers, whether their health improves, the condition improves is something that we'll have to wait and watch for a few more days is uh, what the government sources were telling. Uh, in Kerala, the coordination is done through the Norca Roots platform, which is a platform for the non uh, non rest residential care lights uh, platform where you have all the details of people living abroad from Kerala. So uh, they have started a 24-hour helpline in Kuwait with uh, in coordination with the Malayali organizations there, uh, the Malayali diaspora there. So some of the numbers have been issued to people living in Kuwait and the families here uh, to you know, co contact and coordinate and ensure that uh, you know they get the information that they're seeking on time itself. Uh, the State health minister was supposed to travel to Kuwait yesterday, but in the last moment she was not given a political clearance by the external affairs ministry. Uh, so she couldn't travel, but uh, yes, the coordination activities are in place. Uh, the main concern that one of the, fam the families were raising was about the mortal remains being transferred as soon as possible. Well, that's been done. That's uh, been completely done as the, the 23 the mortal remains of the 23 people have reached Kerala. Also, uh, there was a request by the state government to the center to ensure that it's directly transferred from, uh, you know, uh, Kuwait to one of the airports in Kerala that, uh, you know, the state had requested to avoid, an, avoid a halt in any other uh, cities like Delhi or something. But if possible, please directly trans, uh, bring it to Kerala in one of the airports. We will arrange all the facilities is what the state government had informed the center. Well, that was done because it's coming. It's a direct flight from uh, Kuwait, uh, a direct uh, special Indian Air Force flight from uh, Kuwait to Kuwait that has landed with 31 mortal remains of people from Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. All right. So from the list that I have here, we see that 45 Indians in total have died. 
Out of the 45 Indians, 23 of them are natives of Kerala. And among them also seven um, out of the 31, seven also hailing from Tamil Nadu and one from Karnataka. And there are m multiple others who are coming from different parts of India. Uh, three from Andhra Pradesh, three from Uttar Pradesh, two from Odisha, one Maharashtra, one Bihar, one Bengal, one in Punjab, Haryana one, Jharkhand one. Uh, so total of 45 Indians, now of which only 31 people's mortal remains have been brought back. And this has arrived at the Kochi airport where th they're coordinating with the government of Kerala to ensure the mortal remains reach the family members of those deceased. Shebi, if you could take us through the kind of um, compensation the Kuwait government has promised to those deceased, have they at all? Uh, we know that the Indian government under Prime Minister Modi has promised 2 lakhs ex gratia amount for the kin of deceased. Uh, well, uh, we are yet to get a confirmation regarding that. But yes, the central government has announced uh, 2 lakh for the families of the deceased. The state government has announced 5 lakh to the deceased families and 1 lakh to the families of those injured. Uh, in fact, the, there was an information from the chief minister's office that two prominent uh, NRA businessmen from Kerala uh, of the Lulu group and the RP group, they have also announced compensation of 5 lakh and 2 lakh res respectively, which means uh, the state government said that uh, the families of the deceased will be getting 12 lakh from Kerala itself, uh, 5 lakh of the government and uh, 5 and 2 by the uh, businessmen who have donated, who have, uh, you know, given this money. So a 12 lakh amount will be given from Kerala and uh, the central government has an also announced a uh, uh, compensation of 2 lakhs. So that's the amount that's been announced for now. And also regarding the treatment of the injured, that will be something that the state government and the central, of course, central government will be taking care of. Uh, the state has already informed that they're ready to cooperate in whatever ways they can. Uh, the, the, that's why State Health Minister Veena George was supposed to travel to Kuwait. She was saying that uh, most of the families are here. They cannot travel to Kuwait. So that's why we thought of sending our representative to uh, Kuwait to ensure that all the uh, coordination work is done, whatever help we can provide, we could do that. Being there is what uh, the state had decided, but uh, that didn't take place. There was a lot of, you know, uh, last minute uh, lack of clarity as she was uh, waiting at the airport for the clearance, but the clearance was not given. Uh, well, we might see the politics of it also playing out in the coming days, but uh, the priority right now, like Chief Minister Pindrai Vijayan said, is to ensure that the mortal remains reach the houses as soon as possible. There are 23 ambulances ready uh, in place at the Cochin Airport. A police vehicle, a police pilot vehicle will be accompanying all these uh, 23 ambulances until it reaches the residence of the of this. And most of these, most of these uh, people who've died, unfortunately, Shibi, are uh, the sole breadwinners of their families. They've all moved to the Gulf countries to earn their bread and butter, support an entire family in Kerala. So with their loved ones gone, one can imagine the, 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 the way it could collapse an entire household. And Kerala, large populations there are NRIs, they bank on the money that comes from their loved ones from abroad. And here we're looking at nearly 24 Indians uh, who come from Kerala alone, uh, 24 families uh, that could really that, that's received a blow after this news. So any word on Kerala government in a way trying to support them? Of course, at the end of it, it is a fire mishap, something that isn't in anyone's control. But any word of the kind of help financially that the Kerala government is going to be extending to the family members? Do elaborate for us on the kind of compensation the Kerala government is mulling over. Well, uh, Nabila, the immediate relief that they are announced is five lakh, like I mentioned, uh, to the families of the deceased. Uh, they have already contacted the central government to ensure that the Kuwait authorities also, Kuwait government authorities also, take immediate action uh, to ensure that the families are supported because it's an accident that took place there. There was a lapse of, uh, there was lapses there, so it should be taken care of. This is what Chief Minister Pravijan a while ago said that uh, the central government needs to ensure that the Kuwait government extends its support to these families because uh, you know and also he has also uh, he has also asked that strict action should be taken against whoever was the reason behind it what led to this uh, accident this tragic accident that took place whoever was behind it and action should be strict action should be taken against
against them is what uh, uh, the government here has said. But yes, the compensation has been announced. Uh, we'll have to wait and see in the coming days to see in what other ways the government will be helping them out. Because like you rightly pointed out, some of them are the sole breadwinners of the family. There are small children studying. A lot of them have, uh, you know, school-going children. Uh, so it could be difficult moving forward. So there should be some support from the government side, both the state and the central. So uh, that we will have to wait. What are the other source of help the government will be providing in the coming days? Because in the recent past, we've not really had these kind of major tragedies happening uh, outside the country or like, you know, waiting at the airport to receive the mortal remains of so many people. Uh, the last time we remember something like uh, this of, you know, uh, the authorities waiting in large numbers at the airport was to receive people uh, during the COVID lockdown who were coming back to their homes. But that was a different case. This is uh, probably in the recent past, we've not seen an incident like this where uh, a, an entire state government had to wait at the airport to receive the mortal remains of uh, the fellow Keralites from Kuwait or a country abroad. So uh, we'll have to wait probably for a few more days to see if any other sort of help in terms of job or something will be provided because usually that happens uh, if uh, the person is from uh, is working in Kerala, then yes, yeah. uh, there have been instances where the family, the wife or the uh, brother have been provided a job. So if any of that sort can be yeah. done or will in be done way, something that we'll have to wait for. Absolutely. Question the family at this point of need. Thanks very much, Shibi. I'm surely going to come back to you. But for the moment, I'm going to quickly cut across to the BJP MP, Suresh Gopi, who's spoken on this. Listen in. High regards, very high regards for the Pravasi community. And such a tragedy is so painful. The individual losses of every home, every home that is implicated by this sorrowful incident definitely investigation is going on there will be fruitful results creation of maybe a, a fair, fair report and on the basis of that report the country which holds the prerogative will definitely take steps forward all right that was uh, suresh gopi bjp mp union minister who is also very much present at the Kochi airport to coordinate with all the efforts put in by the Ministry of External Affairs to bring back the mortal remains of those who have died.